Welcome to the second edition of our Diamond Tetra tank build, the tribute to Ivan Mikolji. In this video we're going to go through the setting up of the aquascape, we're going to go through some of the things we had issues with trying to get it just right, and in the end we're going to have fish in this most beautiful aquarium. I hope you enjoy it. Unfortunately this is where I have to do some voiceover for this video. Here we have our empty canvas, it's a dual Rio 240, it's been previously used by me at home, I bought it into the shop so it's a bit dirty, so had to go through the process of scratching off all the muck and all the leftover residue, so that's what we're doing here, just with a nice clean razor blade, a little bit of white vinegar and some water came up quite clean, quite crisp and quite tidy, which I was very happy with. Unfortunately, during this process, I noticed that there was some silicon that looked a little bit loose on one of the front corners. So the first task to do from there was to begin cutting that out. So that was fairly simple, just a nice sharp razor blade. A quick slice here and quick slice at the other end and to pull it off. I don't think this was going to have any uh, structural issues, but just for my own peace of mind, I wanted to cut this out and just replace it just to make sure that I knew that the piece of silicon that was a bit loose wasn't there any further. So again, it was as simple as just cleaning it out, cutting it off, giving it a wee wipe down, getting the silicon in, and just putting a nice wee bead in through here. It wasn't too drastic, but again, it was just for my own peace of mind. So here we are, squirting some silicon on, nice and simple. Then just got my finger and gave it a wee wipe off just to tidy it up, just to make sure there was no more potential loose bits from this new silicon that I applied so it was a fairly simple patch job and I'm now confident this is going to comfortably hold water for a bit longer. Next thing for me to check was uh, if it was square. I wasn't sure if it was or not and wasn't sure if it was sitting nice and flush. So I got the spirit level out and it was sitting bang on slick perfect. So here we go we've got our empty canvas. It's been cleaned, it's been repaired where we've needed it to be repaired and it's sitting square. Next to work on was the background. This was going to be a bit of a challenge because uh, not only can you look from one side, you can also look at it from an end. So we had to work through that as well. I didn't want to go a clear type background or a painted background. I wanted to give something with some textures. These were our two options. We ended up going with the Route 600. The next problem is they didn't quite fit. I don't think they're quite designed to work on this particular aquarium. So I had to get the jigs around and cut it. And I'm not the best at DIY. Unfortunately, I cut too much off it, leaving it too big of a gap on the end between the bracing. And unfortunately, even more so, I did it on both. So here is our mock-up of our backgrounds, the two on the back and the one at the end. At this point, I don't think they look particularly good, and I'm not overly impressed with all this black sitting up top here. I had to cut them so they'd fit under everything. So at this point, I'm not happy, but I'm going to go ahead with it because that was the plan that I decided to work with. I do, however, have another issue to worry about, is that because these aren't designed to be seen from the edges or the ends, these weird little gappings that are happening through here, so I have to work out a way of getting through them. It's going to happen on this corner here, which is the end on it. It's also going to happen on the front panel, which is the front on as well. So that's the little join there. It's obviously designed to click extra pieces in, which works really well. But not so much what we're doing. So I had to carve a piece out, then I smeared some silicon on it and put some of the substrate, some of the sand that we we're using on this aquarium into it to try and blend it to try and make it look nice and natural. So I did that on both of them. The other one I didn't carve out as much because I didn't think it would look quite as right. But in the process of this, applying it all, got plenty of silicon on there, and I stuck it onto the back. Uh, it didn't look like there was a lot of contact points there. These backgrounds are a little bit old and some of them have a little bit of a twist in it, but I was just kind of using what I had. So for the other piece, I made sure I put plenty of silicone on the back of it as well, as well as the back of the background. So we now got them all in place. Still a little bit not sure if that's how I want them to be. It's kind of too late now because they're being stuck on, clamped on, away we go. Um, yeah, they're looking a little bit better. I've got to had to hold this one in because I said they were bowed. So we clamped it and put a container of CTM Matrix, I think it was there, just to try and put as much pressure as we could on. The next day, I believe the silicon should be off by now, so it was time to fill it up. Uh, I just wanted to make sure, basically, that none of the backgrounds were going to float. Previously, I've used 
uh, polystyrene or 3D backgrounds and they have floated. And clearly we don't have a particularly strong join there because there's still water coming up. It's about six hours later and they, none of them started floating. So I'm confident that they are not going to float and that we can continue on with our build. So I drained the water out the drain straight out like that. Uh, got all the weird little bits of detritus and debritis and all that kind of stuff out at the same time. And we are back with our empty canvas. So far, this is one of my options. There's a couple of wee gaps here in the background there and where I've sliced it off. I don't really like this, but I think if I build up a few sort of branches and twigs, maybe I could build a wee canopy. I'm not sure. But now it is time to begin the scape. So as I said in the previous video, for most of this aquascape, the setup, it's all been foraged and found, except for like a one or two rocks um, and some of the sand. So, But the sand itself had came from the same site. So here's our sand. It is a uh, Appleby River river sand. So it's got a lot of texture, and that's exactly what we're trying to do. We're trying to mimic a river-type system here. So these are all the rocks we're playing with. We began fiddling around, putting some rocks in, seeing how we were going. wasn't overly happy at that stage. I've uh, got lots of detailing rocks. Here we put another round one. I really liked this round rock. I really wanted to use it. wasn't quite sure I was getting high enough, so I got a uh, paint scraper out and began building up the substrate. To the left-hand side, we've started putting a couple extra rocks in to try and contrast with this big rock here. And the whole time, I'm sitting here watching some of the documentaries from Ivan just to continue to try and keep the inspiration going, really trying to tap into what he was doing. Added some more feature rocks, a little bit more detailing rocks coming through here. Beginning to get a good vibe of what we're doing. I think we've moved away from these bigger boulders and we're coming into these slightly smaller ones, these rounder ones. And we've still got Ivan playing in the background, continuously trying to give me some inspiration. Coming from the end, I'm liking it. I think it looks really good. I'm really liking the depth that it's providing and the contrast in the two or three different heights. So I'm pretty happy with how we're going end on. Um, as you can see here, coming from the distance, it's kind of doing exactly what I want it to do. I'm still not entirely sure. I'm happy with the way that second structure is looking from the front. So we started putting another couple of smaller rocks in, uh, putting some of these detailing rocks in. Unfortunately, they came with a bit of water with them. So we had to get the wet vac out to dry them out, just not to obscure the view too much. Uh, obviously, because some of this has been used and uh, some of the bits and pieces we've got, there's a lot of uh, little bits of twigs and a little bit of debris and stuff that's come from the river still floating around as well. So I like that. I thought it made it quite a natural kind of vibe, which is why the water's still dirty. But as we began draining it out and taking it out, I could really see how it was coming along. I started to add some more detailing rocks and I'd begun to get really happy with how this was coming along. It was time to put some water in it. I really liked this particular shot because some of these materials are still a bit dirty and a bit dusty. It just gave that real natural vibe to it. So we filled it up and here is where we're at with the full aquarium. Still a bit dusty, so to speak. Still a little bit dirty, but I quite like how this is looking. It's giving me a real natural river waterway vibe. We had some uh, bits of twigs, which we're going to eventually add in once they've sunk, which have some leaves still sitting on them. So we put them in there floating, connect the filter. There's plenty of flow going through here, which I'm really happy at. I'm trying to get a decent chunk of flow in here. I don't want it to be like rapids, but I don't want it to be slow. And I think the level that we're kind of getting is about where I want to achieve. So I'm happy with that. We can see it's flowing and it's swirling, but it's not going to push the fish around everywhere or pin them to the end, which is great. So the filter selection, I think, is the right one, which was one of the Oase uh, canister filters. Here's the twig sitting in here. I think everything's coming along quite nicely. I'm quite happy with this end-on look. Overall, I'm pretty happy. Here we are the next day. Uh, the water's cleared up via the filter, and there's a bit of tannins that are coming through. It's just beginning to stain the water. Well, it's actually quite a gorgeous golden colour. I want to try and go for minimal amount of tannins if I possibly can. I don't really want to go too much deeper than that if I can help it. But this particular colour is absolutely lovely. And so then it was time to put some fish in. The star of the show are the diamond tetras. We've added approximately 40 young diamond tetras into here. I'm hoping having a decent quantity of them is really going to bring out some natural behaviours in them as well. 
and we've also added around about 25 bronze corridors. I tried to select a fish that went with the diamond tetras the best of what I could actually get in New Zealand. The closest I could get was these bronze corridors and potentially later down the track we might add a blue Akara as well but I'm not 100% sure. So they've been in for about 24 hours now. I put some food in the water just to make sure they're all hung, um, hungry and, and rummaging around. Everything was still eating, so I was pretty content with that. So here we go. Here is the end of it for now. We will continue to update this video series once everything's settled in, once everything's calmed down, and once all the fish have gotten a little bit bigger. I really hope you've enjoyed this. Thank you very much.